Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Welcome back to Lecture 2 of Chapter 1. In this lecture, I'm going to show you how every nth order scalar ODE can be written as a first order vector ODE. And that very naturally leads to the interpretation of an ODE as a vector field on phase space. So let's recall the examples that we looked at in the previous lecture. So what are, these are second order, one, two, and three, third order, and fourth order ODEs, four and five respectively. And scalar means that the functions that solve these ODEs x of t for 1, 2, and 3, f of eta and y of x are scalar valued functions of the independent variable. So the way we write these as first order vector ODEs as, is that we redefine all the derivatives below the highest order as new dependent variables and we move everything other than the derivatives that are to the left of the equal sign to the right hand side. Okay, it's easiest to see that with examples. So the first three are second order. So the derivative below the highest order, the first order, the first derivative, x dot equals v. And we've done that for first three, moved everything else to the right hand side that wasn't there already. And we have first order vector ODEs, where the vector is, in this case, xv. And I don't know what they are in particular, so I just say x is a real number, v is a real number. In specific applications, they may be, some, may be something else, but I'll look at that later on. Okay, for the third order and fourth order, the same thing. Third order, so the second and first derivative, we redefine as new dependent variables. Move everything over to the right hand side and we can write it in a nice matrix notation if we want to. And in this particular case, the three dependent variables are F, V, and U, and they live in three space. And I'll leave it to you to look at the same procedure for the fourth order equation. But the point is, in this formulation, and this is what we'll look at in the course, the most general form for an autonomous ODE would be written as x dot equals f of x, where x is in Rn. It may be more general. We'll, t we'll come to that later, more general n-dimensional manifold. And autonomous is very simple to understand in this case. f of x does not depend upon time. Non-autonomous, f of x depends explicitly on time. And we put the initial condition here because we're going to look at that. We want to look at uh, solutions that satisfy specific initial conditions. But when we talk about the nature of solutions in the next lecture, we'll deal with that more explicitly. Okay, so the space of dependent variables for this first order system is called the phase space. So when represented as a first order vector equation, the space of dependent variables is the phase space. So the, the solutions x of t are a curve in phase space and the function f of x or f of x and t at each point of the curve give you the tangent vector. So in that sense, the natural interpretation in this formulation of a an ODE is as a vector field defined on the phase space. Okay, now these phase spaces, the geometry and topology of the phase spaces play a very significant and crucial role in the nature of solutions. So, for example, let's go to one dimension. What are the possible phase spaces? Now we're more precise with the nature of the dependent variables. Well, it could be the real line, it can be a subinterval of the real line, or some ODEs can have angular variables. In that sense, it could be a circle. 
S1, or we could leave off the 1 in 1 dimensions. Now, I mentioned last in the last lecture that we could solve, I put that in quotes here, every first order autonomous ODE. And here's what I mean by that. This is a general form for a first order autonomous ODE. X lives in the phase space. It could be um, R1, S1, or sub some inter sub interval of R1. Well, we can write this equation in integral form. So that equation is equivalent to 1.4. And if we could do this inter integral, so if f of x was 1 over f of x was integrable, we didn't divide by 0, and it's at least continuous, and we could then solve for x of t for whatever expression we got, then we would have the solution. But that's a lot to ask for. And we know full well from calculus that you can't solve this for general functions f of x. I mean, get an explicit solution in terms of known functions. So we'll come back later in this geometrical formulation of the ODE as a vector field on phase space. It's going to teach us how to get information out of this. Remember Dirac's quote. Okay, what about two dimensions? Well, there are different possibilities for phase space. We could have the plane, Cartesian product of two real lines. The two torus, the Cartesian product of two circles. The finite cylinder, the Cartesian product of a, a finite interval in a circle, and the infinite cylinder. So we'll see many examples where these different structures of the phase space uh, are present in our specific ODEs, and that's going to cause a constraint on the possible nature of solutions. All right, that's enough for this lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to talk about existence and uniqueness and what that may mean for ODEs. So, see you all next time. Bye!